Welcome to Chapter 7, Renaissance Graphic Design. Our time frame is approximately 1450 to 1700 AD. During this time period, there was a turning away from medieval beliefs toward a new concern for human potential and value. This new spirit was accompanied by a renewed study of classical writings of Greek and Roman cultures. To begin this chapter, define the terms Renaissance and Renaissance Humanism. Europe's eastern gate, Venice, was the city that led the way in Italian topography. Johannes de Spira, a German goldsmith, was given a five-year monopoly on printing in Venice. After his untimely death, Nicholas Jensen from France established a second printing press in Venice. Jensen's fame is one of the greatest typeface designers of all time. He published about 150 books. Please tell me why is Jensen considered to be one of the greatest typeface designers? On this slide, we see an example of some of his beautiful printing. This happens to come from the book, Little Office of the Virgin Mary, that was completed in 1475. This is an Incunabula, period, manuscript. The Renaissance is characterized by floral decoration. It was applied to furniture, architecture, and manuscripts. With the beautiful floral illustrations of the period and decorative elements still being done mostly by an illuminator, it was natural for the evolution of bookmaking toward it all being done on a press. Erdhard Ratold achieved significant design innovation toward the totally printed book. Working in Venice with his partners, Ratold printed Calendarium. Refer to your text to find out the contents and the characteristics of Calendarium. This image depicts some of the pages within Calendarium. Knowledge is overcoming superstition as printers disseminated new scientific knowledge. On this page, we see diagrams in a grid of solar and lunar eclipses printed in yellow and black. On this page, there are two top circles printed on heavy paper, cut out and mounted over a larger woodcut with tape on a string. This may be the first die cut in graphic material on a printed book. Although most incunabula period manuscripts do not have title pages, but include information about the publication at the end in the colophon, the Calendarium is the first printed book to have an ornamental title page. Radhold is thought to be the first publisher of scientific material. He is most famous for his 1482 first edition of Euclid, adapted from a medieval translation. This is a spread from elementary geometry. And here is another one. Please note in the margins the geometric forms. And be prepared to discuss what was the technical achievement in Radholt's edition of Euclid's Elementary of Geometry. The Ars Moriendi was a bestseller during the 15th century. Ars Moriendi means the art of dying, and at least 65 editions were produced by 1501 by various cultures. Italian printers Giovanni and Alberto Elvice in Verona published an edition of this popular book using printers, flowers, or fleurons, which are decorative elements cast in type. They use these graphic elements in the title page design and as fillers in short lines and left blank areas in the text blocks. This is one of your vocabulary words. Aldus Minucius was an important humanist and scholar. He established a printing press in Venice to realize his vision to publish the major works of the great thinkers of the Greek and Roman cultures. He recruited skilled technicians, such as the brilliant type designer Francisco de Bologna, also known as Griffo simply, and important scholars to staff his Aldine Press. He rapidly became known for his scholarship and editorial authority. In this picture, we see the type specimen sheet created by probably the most important person on Minutius' staff, Francisco de Bologna, also known as Griffo again. And the book is called Dietna by Peter Bembo in 1495. Griffo used a pre-Caroline script to produce this Roman type. He was amazingly brilliant, and this type style still survives today, known as Bembo. Be able to discuss why Aldus Minucius was an important printer at this time in history. As an example of his work in 1499, he printed The Dream of Polyphilus. 
is a romantic fantasy which tells of Polyphus' wandering quest for his lover who had taken a vow of chastity. This celebration of paganism with erotic overtones and a few explicit illustrations probably escaped scandal only because of its high cost and a very limited Venetian audience. The printer, type designer, author, and artist worked very closely together. The artist, however, is not known, but I'd like you to be able to examine what are the graphic qualities of the book that make it a masterpiece among incunabula period. In 1501, Minutius met the demand for smaller, more economical books by publishing Virgil's Opera. It had a three and a half by six page side and was set in the first italic type font. Please tell me what is this font based upon? In 1502, Minutius was granted a monopoly on Greek publishing and italic printing in Venice. However, soon after he and Griffo parted ways, the innovation of graphic design in Venice ended. Minutius did publish numerous classic editions in the small font and format in italic, and these made the Aldine Press logo famous throughout Europe. Griffo then vanished from the historical record after being accused of murder. The Italian Renaissance began to end with the sack of Rome in 1527 by Charles V and his Spanish allies. Innovation then spread to France. During the course of the early 16th century, war and censorship reared its ugly head as church and state sought to maintain their authority and control. So spreading ideas through the printing process became the main purpose of the French scholar printers. However, despite war and censorship, the humanist spirit swept over France and produced books of great design. Two brilliant graphic designers of the time were Geoffrey Torrey and Claude Garamon. We're going to talk about Torrey first. The skill and spirit they embodied helped to define the term Renaissance man. A Renaissance man is a person who makes a unique contribution to more than one field such as philosophy, literacy, art, or science. Torrey's accomplishments are truly staggering. Among his significant contributions, he played a major role in importing the Italian influence and then developing a unique French Renaissance book of design and illustration. Torrey loved letter forms. In the hours of Jean Lalama, he developed a light Roman with long ascenders and descenders. Some scholars believe that Torrey designed early Roman types for Henri Estian and Simone de Colin, which happened to be two other printers of the day. But I want you to tell me what was Torrey's full list of accomplishments. In France in the 16th century, engravers were usually booksellers. Torrey opened a Parisian bookselling firm on the Petit Pont at the sign of the Pot Cassé, which means broken urn. It was here that he published illustrated, bound, and printed books. He sought out the most skilled craftsmen and taught them to approach book design, which helped to get rid of the heavy, dark, gothic styles from French printing. This is Tory's printer mark, or in modern terms, his logo. Its meaning is really sad. He had a 10-year-old daughter, Agnes, who suddenly died. He wrote and published a poem in her memory. It is in this book that the first pot cassé appears. The shattered urn, chained to a closed lock book with the inscription no longer, seems to symbolize the death of his daughter. The small angel in the right-hand corner was cut away in subsequent books by Tory. Tory was famous for his Roman capitals. These initials were the perfect accompaniment to the lighter new Roman types by Garamond and very popular. The capital G demonstrates the crible technique. Please look closely at the background and what do you see? In 1529, Torrey published the most influential and important book of his career, Le Champ Fleuret, which he wrote, illustrated, printed, and bound. This three-book series is a treatise on topography and his most famous work. Be sure to know why was Le Champ Fleuret important to the evolution of graphic design and what did this multi-volume publication contain? On this page here, we see Roman capitals that are constructed using a scientific or mathematical principles on a grid. And in this particular page, we see pictorial forms used to create an alphabet. Torrey became the most influential graphic designer of his century. Claude Garamond is another brilliant designer to discuss during this period. He was the first punch cutter and type designer to work independently of printing firms. 
His Roman typefaces were designed with perfection, lighter with more contrast between the thick and thin parts of the letter form. His types complemented Tori's perfectly, and with Tori, their type designs virtually eliminated heavy Gothic styles from Europe. Please be able to tell me what were Claude Garamond's other contributions to the evolution of graphic design. Christophe Plantin was a printer during this time from the Netherlands. Plantin's design style was a more ornamented, weightier version of French typographic design. Please be able to also tell me what was his major contribution to graphic design. And this kind of brings us to the 17th century. The 17th century was a relatively quiet time for graphic design innovation. Since a large stock of ornaments, punches, and woodblocks were still available from the 1500s, there was little incentive for printers to commission new graphic materials. It was a time of being happy with the status quo. However, over in the North American colonies, a British locksmith was commissioned by a wealthy dissenting clergyman to establish a printing press. The British locksmith's name was Stephen Day. The first printing was done in 1639. This was actually the very first book to be designed and printed fully in the English American colonies. It was entitled The Whole Book of Psalms. It lacked refinement, but the different typefaces emphasized the importance and meanings of the word nicely. Even though censorship and taxes were heavy on both newspapers and advertising, printing grew steadily in the colonies. By 1775, there were about 50 printers in the 13 colonies, and they played a very important part in the upcoming revolution. Just as printing had urged Europe towards a Protestant Reformation, it pushed the American colonies towards revolution. Close this chapter, let's take a look at copper plate engraving. It continued to grow in popularity as technical refinements greatly increased range of tone, textures, and detail. This is an engraving by Abraham Voss illustrating the plate printers in his printing shop. What interesting purposes were these engravings used for? The nature of engraving, scratching fine lines into metal, encouraged the development of script letter forms of extreme fineness and delicacy, and this was used with meticulously detailed illustrations. Engraving became a big deal in this 18th century, and we'll take a look at that next chapter. So in conclusion, books became an important commodity in the 17th century. Printers' skills increased, literacy increased, and the humanistic spirit was sweeping over the world.